Hey there guys. So I got into the preview for Fleet, which is JetBrain's answer to uh, Microsoft's VS Code. And so I'm part of the first um, run of folks who are gonna take a look at it, report any bugs before they put it out to general release. I thought it might be interesting to compare and contrast with some different um, programs. So I'm primarily a Python programmer. So I love PyCharm, this is PyCharm on uh, one of my most complex projects, uh, which is um, my donation tracker for Extra Life. And just to take a quick look here, uh, some of the features. So here it understands what a setup config file looks like. You see it's got these um, bracketed um, sections in orange. Um, if you go here to YAML, it understands what YAML looks like. Um, this is my readme markdown. So uh, over here you type your markdown and then over here this is what it's going to look like uh, on GitHub minus the uh, images. And uh, if we and you can see here it has detected a spelling error. And um, let's see down here you've got um, Git. So here's my different uh, branches and what they've done as I've done merging. Um, and then other things here like you've got access to a terminal. Uh, which is already in your virtual environment, so you don't have to worry about remembering to turn on your virtual environment. You've got a Python console, and the nice thing about this Python console is that it has access to any um, any of the things that you've installed uh, from your requirements into this environment. Um, and uh, here we can install Python packages, and these are any problems that they see, for example, the typos, and then let's open up a Python file. Let's see. Here's the main bit of stuff. Uh, let's open it up on this side. Uh, I think we're gonna have to move it over. Uh, job secret. There we go. And we'll. So look, it's saying here we've got some unused import statements. So we could potentially get rid of those and simplify things. Uh, but you can see here, um, it's got some stuff here from the sorcery uh, plugin. It's and then as you let's see um, here, it knows that this is a string. For example, uh, if we were to be calling something else, it knows where it's calling from and it tells us what the parameters are and all that type of stuff. So. It's very, very useful when you've got a nice complex project. And later I'll open up something simple as well, uh, which is probably what I'd be more likely to open in something like VS Code. But so now let's do a comparison. Um, let's take a look at um, KDevelop, which is what I used to use before I got to PyCharm. Right. So this is a scratch pad I had a long time ago. Um, so let's see here. So you can see here it also shows me what um, what branch I'm in, we've got a terminal, which is not automatically in your virtual environment. Got a code browser. And now KDevelop, to be fair, is mostly for um, is mostly for um, C development. Uh, but let's see here. This is let's close all that up. So if we if we go to the same file we had open before. Um, so what we're, what we're uh, it is evaluating things here. I haven't opened it in KDevelop in years. Um, but kind of what we're missing is an understanding that I've got stuff imported that I'm not using. Um, it does, I believe, follow you know hints over, but that might require it to finish analyzing the file. But I believe from the past, I remember it, it does do stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it does have some code highlighting. Um, 
it does have, let's see if we open the config file. So not quite the same type of highlighting. Let's go to the YAML for the, um, oh, you know, it doesn't even show up here. The, uh, the YAML from the GitHub actions. Okay, so it finished, looks like it finished doing its an analyzing over here. So let's go back to this. If we go here, So not quite as much of an understanding of Python, although I, I could have sworn there is a way to get it to show you where these things are coming from. Although again, it may not work because um, I've got a much more complex setup now. All right, now let's go towards our simpler um, programs or code editors versus our IDEs, or at least not as full-fledged of an ID. So first let's start with Kate. So if we were to open this up in Kate, uh, now in KDE, the same like back end is, um, is handling, is handling a lot of the stuff with the uh, understanding how to parse the files. So that's good. They're not, they're not um, duplicating that work. All right, so again, this must this would look familiar to you because, of course, um, just like in it's sharing the same parsing engine as KDevelop, we can see the project over here. And then we've got um, Git, the ability to stage things and, and push things out to Git. So, you know, it's okay. Uh, now let's go to VS Code. So this is the competitor to, um, to Fleet. Let's see what that looks like. This is opening up some CircuitPython project I was working on before. Let's go to open folder. All right. So again, let's go to the same files we've been looking at the whole time. Okay, so do you trust? I do trust. All right. Um, let's see here. It looks like PyLance had some kind of issue. Um, so the code highlighting is pretty nice. Let's see if it can recognize. Uh, let's see, what is this here? No quick fixes. Import copy. So this may be just, um, I need to do some kind of um, uh, some kind of work here to make this know about my virtual environment. Oh yeah, let's see if I click down here, virtual environment. It's definitely not the right one. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's browse for it. Go back to here. Python. Let's see if that works. Any better? I'm not sure if it will or not, but. Doesn't look like it changed. <laughs> Interesting. Try this one more time. Maybe I just need to go to the VM folder and pick that. Let's see. Clearly, this is uh, pretty annoying um, that this won't just fix itself. Does that one work? I clicked the recommended one. 
It doesn't seem to want to switch. <laughs> Which is weird. Well, it is what it is, right? Let's see. So does that mean it probably can't... Alright, so it knows... Let's see. Self so it knows that one. That's a self. Let's see if I tell it... If we're telling it... Um... Okay, so it is, it is able to um, parse the, st the structure here and figure out what it's supposed to do, which is good. Those types of things are always um, very useful. Huh, any. That's funny. Oh, that's kind of um, illuminating. Uh, and I think because the virtual environment issue that's going on here... Um, is why it's maybe not telling me about the... Well, so I guess here it's telling me I'm not using that one, so... There we go. Well, at any rate, that's what that looks like. Now let's let's open up... Uh, this is typically not the type of code I would open up in Fleet. If I was doing something like this, I would have gone to... Um, straight to... Uh, if I was doing something like this, I would use PyCharm. But let's go ahead and do Fleet now. So we've got this untitled workspace here. Huh, we've got this Java icon. So it looks like, uh, you know, again, this is early days for this program, right? It hasn't necessarily been fully baked. Let's go ahead and try attaching the same folder we've been looking at. See what happens there. All right, I'm not in love with this <laughs> white background here, but all right. So here's some Git stuff up here. Nothing in the gutter down here. Uh, I don't know if this is what, what they call the gutter. Now uh, we've got some icons here that make sense, right? This setup pi is a Python icon. We've got Markdown. We've got an image. Um, let's see if we go in here. Alright, um, extremely light on any kind of colorization here, um, doesn't look like it's doing much to analyze anything in particular, what have we got up here, smart mode, let's enable it, see what that does. Alright, so I guess we just have to tell it, hey, we want this Git stuff. So here's, I guess, the stuff that we want to do, like a quick commit. This is kind of more like what a VS Code looks like, where you're you're just getting this commit message, you're not getting this whole... So if, you, if we were to look at PyCharm, and we go to do a commit, uh, oops, uh, commit... We get this whole thing here. Where we, this is becomes the the title, and then we type the message down here. Um, this is definitely a lot more like if we were to look at VS Code. Um, just putting a message up here, uh, which if I was working in a team, that might annoy me quite a bit if someone did that. Uh, get commit and sync. No, nope, that's where we, that's what we have now. Get history. Okay, not quite as pretty as in PyCharm. Not quite as oh, this is just the current branch, I guess. So it's it's kind of not as um, useful to me versus some of the other things. Terminal, the terminal is not in the virtual environment. Um, we got Git here. Yeah, so definitely would not prefer this for um, 
over PyCharm for a big project. But let's take a look at uh, one of the smaller projects that I would typically open in something like VS Code for uh, Fleet. So if we go back to PyCharm um, and we go to my um, amortization, put in a new window. I do always like that when you open up a project for the first time in PyCharm, it just defaults to showing you your, um, your readme. Makes it very clean for looking at stuff for the first time. Um, so this is much more of the type of project that I would open where it's just, it's literally just basically one file that does everything. It's very simple. I don't need this whole thing with PyCharm, although I do like the Pythonic aspects of it. So let's take a look in the other IDEs that we've been taking a look at. Okay, so now that, just for a minute here, going back to Extra Life, um, Fleet did some understanding of my file, and now it knows to run stuff here. It knows that some of these imports are not being used. Um, I would doubt it's that many, but um, let's see if we go here. It's not really giving useful output though compared to PyCharm. But anyway, let's go ahead and close that out and we'll just close out and all right, so uh, I'm not gonna you do k develop for that one file. That's not normally what I would do is I would go to Kate if I'm working on something that simple, and we'll just go open. This basically gives me everything I need. Um, it's uh, it's simple enough. It's just a very quick and simple um, project. And so I don't need like a whole IDE understanding what's going on and all that. If we would go to VS Code, let's do a new window. Might as well open the folder. So again, nice and simple, pretty easy. Uh, we've got here um, some, some little things to tell me, hey, these are maybe things that I want to um, I want to uh, push out to Git because they've been modified. Um, but, you know, pretty simple, easy, easy peasy. Um, doesn't appear to be a simple way to just hit play like there is in PyCharm but there wasn't necessarily in Kate either. And again, this is just a simple, simple situation. Again, we've got this weird virtual environment situation that would be nice if, oh, this time it looks like it actually took it. Let's see. Anywho, let's check out Fleet, see what it looks like in Fleet. <laughs> Actually, before we do anything else, let us see if there's any... 
options. I'm trying to see where the options are in here. If we can make it any any prettier. grab the new workspace. All right, so we were able to just open this up without the folder, although we can attach the folder as well. Uh, we can turn on the smart, smart mode, why not? So we don't have the plus, the play symbol here, but I think we will eventually. Uh, although, apparently even though I turned it on, didn't want to turn on. <laughs> Maybe I need to attach the folder, let's see. There he goes, now it can be smart. So we got run up here, don't have run here yet. sure what this blue line in here is blue dot but does it do we don't have the symbols that we had in uh, VS code saying that there were modified requirements and so on settings uh, maybe they haven't implemented settings just yet definitely more of a fan of having things highlighted as they are in most of the other IDs. I know some people don't like it. Some people just like it to look like this, uh, where, yeah, this is quoted, so that's important to point out, but otherwise don't have all these different colors for the different um, the different variables and, and so on. But I prefer, definitely prefer it differently. I'm going to pause while it updates the indexes and then we'll go from there. All right, so I decided to open these up side by side while um, I was waiting for this to finish indexing. Um, so just taking a look at the differences here. All right, but that's done indexing. So now we should we do. Yep, yeah, now we have a play button here. We can run it. NumPy, yeah, because it's it doesn't seem to recognize the um, the virtual environment. And is this one this one maybe will work? Let's see. Oh, you know what? Um, I think it doesn't help. So, so this does have the virtual environment, which is nice. It opened that one uh, automatically. Uh, I don't know that this one did. However. I probably haven't worked on this since I upgraded to um, Python 3.10, so it probably does not legitimately have uh, NumPy available. Um, all right, so let's just take a look at these side by side. So starting over here, here we've got these nice icons to guide us to uh, source control. So here we've got... Apparently, uh, need for a good uh, um, git ignore <laughs> git ignore file. Um, we can search within there. We've got our files. We've got run and debug and extensions. Okay, and then over here, so we've got kind of the same stuff, um, but. Uh, not, not, you know, not nice. But again, uh, Fleet is, you know, has just come out, so that's no big deal. Um, so we've got a, a modified here and here. We don't, sh we're not showing anything like that here. Well, extra principle, yes, is showing as, as modified, but not the 
the requirements, which I think is interesting. Um, as far as icons, um, you know, we've got pretty much the same thing going on here, which is good, uh, nice and clear to understand what we're talking about. Um, we'll kind of file at it quickly, you know, without even have, having to read what it says there. Um, so if we come back to the actual file, um, I, I think really the the biggest issue is, uh, for me, the way I like to code, is um, that this is very plain here, and it really, really does help me when um, they, they use the colors to kind of separate things out and kind of help understand the code. Uh, so for example here they've got um, it's also got the highlighting stuff which JetBrains usually does have so I don't know if they don't if they mean for fleet not to have it or they just haven't added it back in yet um, so I do like this part in, in uh, fleet it's it's very clear that this is what's runs if you hit run I mean, obviously, if you're a Python person, you would understand that. But here, it's kind of unclear what's going to run. Um, we've got this thing. Um, I've used it on various IDEs, and it's interesting to see the shape of your code, but not necessarily as useful as it could be. Um, but yeah, between these two, as it stands right now, Clearly, I think any um, dev would pick uh, VS Code. It, I mean, there's definitely some kind of you know potential nostalgia retro thing going on here, but uh, I don't know. I, I definitely like the look of this one more, and it's just in line with PyCharm and, and the other um, the other IDEs that they make. Um, this one is very very much standing out, but the fact that it doesn't even have its own icon over here tells me it's probably not fully baked yet. They're still working on it. So this is where it's at right now. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching. Bye.